puddles, puddles, puddles everywhere. Well, it finally warmed up, but of course that means rain. It's been raining for days. There's just like puddles and flood everywhere. We can't go to the playground yet, but at least we're outside getting some fresh. <gasps> that was a big puddle. But at least we're outside getting some fresh air and our walk and steps in for the day. It is a good thing we got home when we did. We did about a 45 minute walk, just kind of through our neighborhood. I was tracking on my phone and it said we did just under two miles. Nora girl is just finishing up lunch. She is going to go down for a nap after this. And I'm gonna get the last of my workout done for today, which is getting on my rebounder for 15 minutes. The toddler is down napping. Millie girl is napping here on the couch. Went ahead and pulled out my Bcan rebounder. Again, if you guys are looking for it, I have a link in my description box. I'm currently doing a 30 day rebounder challenge. I'm gonna have a whole review on it after my 30 days is up. I'm currently on day 23. I'm doing 15 minutes a day and I actually found a workout I'm going to follow. Today we're gonna to try out Dr. Bree's Vibrant Pelvic Health and it is a 15 minute trampoline workout. It talks about being good for posture, lymph and pelvic health. Okay, I thought I would just like sit and chat with you guys while I do like my cool down and hydrate and do kind of like a recap update of the last two weeks. I did a one week update on my health and weight loss journey here on my channel. I'll link it below if you guys are new to the channel and want to catch up at where I began on January 1st. Last week, I kind of missed doing an update, so I'm just gonna kind of roll it into this one. First, I wanna talk about that workout I just did. This is my first time trying a video from her channel, and I cannot recommend enough. It was so different from the other videos I've been following and trying, and even my like self-guided workouts I've been doing on my own on the Rebounder. It was so calm and lower paced, very relaxing tone to her voice, not crazy music. It was almost like if yoga and rebounding meshed together into one very relaxed but engaged. Like I am warm and I'm like a little bit sweaty. Like I still got a workout in. I felt all the different muscle groups in my body got engaged and I think that was a big part of this workout was she kind of went muscle group by muscle group, engaging your muscles, especially the core. But everything was about stability and keeping low and it wasn't about the highest bounce or the fastest pace or see how big of a sweat and workout you could get in. But to be honest, I feel all the small muscle groups in between your big muscle groups are engaged. And I feel like I got a fairly deep muscle workout even though it wasn't a super high intensity cardio workout. She also included elements of breathing, stretching, and at the end you saw she ended with some yoga relaxation poses, like child's pose. It was nice to feel like I had something that made me feel like it was a little bit more of a workout, but included those elements of relaxation and stretching and breathing that I love so much from yoga. It was almost like I was getting my movement pillar in because I do follow a five pillars of health this year that's a part of my health and wellness journey. And I look at my nutrition, my movement, sleep, stress management, and my mindset as all different pillars of health. And I feel like this type of workout where I was on my rebounder, it felt active, I got a bit of a sweat on, but I also had the breathing and stretching. I feel like it was combining my movement pillar and my stress management pillar into one activity. And as mom of littles, when you don't have a lot of time during the day, doing something that's a combo like that is a huge plus. Anyway, I've been raving about it. I really liked it. I would almost add that into a rotation for myself. I'm gonna check out what other videos she has on her channel. So movement, if we're talking about our recap from the last two weeks, has been going really well. I've still been at it on my 30 day rebounder challenge. It can be really difficult some days to get it in. I know it's only 15 minutes, but finding that 15 minutes where I'm gonna stop, where there's, you know, my house might be in disarray from the kids or I have a sink full of dishes or I'm exhausted and wanna go to bed and I just have to find that time and know it's only 15 minutes. Stop worrying about everything else around me and just take the time and do it because I feel so much better after it's done. So that's been something I've been working on, but we're, we're getting there. We're trying to focus and make sure we know that 15 minutes of alone time to work out has been super beneficial for I think both my physical health and my mental health. 
WW is going well. I have tracked my points every single day. Some people have asked how I factor in my activity with like my rebounder and workouts into the WW app. And I just personally choose not to track my activity because I feel like anything I do that's active, whether it's like my 45 minute walk today or the 15 minute rebounder workout, those are extra on top of, and I'm not looking to get more points to eat for working out. And I've never counted those um, for extra points, like for activity points or whatever they've been called in the past. Like I just, I keep that tracking separate. I don't put it into my app. So I've been on top of my game with tracking. I've been like within my points range. There are some days I go over my point allotment, but I'm staying within my weekly points. And honestly, there are some days I'm under my daily point total and I get a couple carryovers because if you don't use up all your daily points, like I get 46 points a day. If I don't use all those, say I only use 42 points a day for a day, four points up to the max of four points will be carried over into your weeklies to be used at some other point during the week if you want. My goal is not really to use up all of my weeklies, but they're there if I feel like I need to use them. If I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat an extra snack or have a little bit of a bigger dinner meal if it's gonna keep me feeling full or satisfied and still in balance with my points because I know if I like deprive myself too much, that's what makes the first couple weeks getting back into a routine, like being on WW so hard, is that first feeling of restriction and like you can't have the things you were just eating all the time. And I feel like when you are too much into it and you're restricting, 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 that's when all of a sudden it's like, I'm done, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm quitting. So I feel like the weeklies are such a good tool to use when you're feeling deprived just have an extra snack or add that extra piece of baguette of bread with your soup. Um, make it more satisfying to you because then I'm not going to lose it later in the evening and just scrounge through whatever I have in the pantry and like be eating snacks, you know what I mean? Because you just have that feeling of hunger and like you're not satisfied. Sleep has been better. I've for the most part been getting eight hours-ish <laughs> of sleep. I do, I try to get going to bed, like going into the bedroom and starting that process around 10. So hopefully I'm asleep by 10.30. Um, usually we wake up around 6.30. That's the time I have to get Lila up to get ready for school. Nora, our youngest, has been kind of going through a weird sleep. I don't know that I would call it a full on sleep regression, but she's been waking up earlier this last week than typical for her. So sometimes we're playing the game of all of a sudden she wakes up at 4.30 or five, we go give her a cuddle, we put her back down and she goes back to sleep, but then is up for the day at six or 6.15 or 6.30. Um, it just, it's it's changing all the time and that's kids are unpredictable and you just gotta roll with the punches and my husband and I take turns figuring that out together. But it has made trying to get an early start morning, like before the kids wake up that I had wanted to do, kind of difficult because they're, is no telling what time Nora will wake up. And I feel like every time I do set my alarm for like six o'clock so I can get up, have a protein shake and get on my rebounder, the second I plan for that and set my alarm, Nora gets up at 5.55. So we'll see. It's been actually working out pretty well for me to do my rebounder when I first put her down for a nap because then I can like have a moment to take a breather afterwards and make myself something to eat and that usually is good. She's still at least taking an hour to two hours depending on the day long nap. We've been stuck inside a lot with the weather either being too cold or really rainy. So her nap hasn't been as long as if we were getting outside and being really physically active at the playground and stuff. So hopefully we'll have some sunnier weather on the way soon. Movement, nutrition, sleep, stress management. Well, things like this, doing some yoga or reading and taking a bath have been helpful for me with stress management the last week. I did purchase the other day a paint by numbers kit. Uh, I was talking about wanting to get one of these to be honest, I bought this like sometime last week and I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> so I need to, I need to actually do this. Hope maybe I can get this in with my like rebounder, eat lunch and then do a little painting or I don't know. The neat freak mom in me is worried about I'll get this out and start it and then Nora will wake up and we'll have to go get live from school and I won't have time to properly clean everything up and the kids hands will get in the paint. And so maybe this is an after kid bedtime activity. And then for mindset, one of the things I found most helpful is doing just some like breath work. And I know that kind of sounds silly, but it's just taking like five to 10 minutes and sitting in a quiet area 
and just connecting my breath and my thoughts and kind of listening to some soft music. Let all of the constant lists and running thoughts that are in my head just melt away and finding maybe a positive mantra or two to focus on for the day. Some of my favorites that I've thought about that have helped me as like a mom who's always kind of worrying that I'm not doing enough with my kids, enough for my household. I just, I've always been feeling like it's not enough. Like I've had guilt about YouTube that I only got two videos up the last two weeks instead of three like I was trying for. And you know, you're, you're always worried about, is it enough? And that's something that I know is a part of my mindset, the like negative talk in my brain that I need to work on turning off and tuning out and saying, I am enough. I'm doing so well. I'm proud of myself. And that definitely comes back into play with my health journey and weight loss journey. Talking about weigh-ins, last week for week two, I stepped on the scale and weighed in. I actually forgot to get a video clip of it, but it was the start of that time of the month for me and I was a half a pound up. So week one on my journey, I had lost over three pounds. It was a great start. Week two, I was back up half a pound, but I think something to always remember, women in particular, our bodies can fluctuate weight up and down multiple pounds day to day, let alone week to week. So I know for me, especially when I'm going through on my period during that time of the month, I can fluctuate my weight from one to four pounds just day to day with bloating and extra water and all that kind of stuff. So I was good about like not dwelling on it and I didn't wanna make a big deal about, oh, I gained a half a pound week two because it was also day two of my period when my weigh-in day was. So that kind of stuff in life happens. It's the same if you go out for a special meal and even if you plan for it and use your weeklies and you're within your points, if it included a lot of salt, or heavy starches, your weight might be up if your weigh-in day is the next day or two until your body kind of evens out. Those small fluctuations, they're not truly reflecting your fat loss. So January 1st, my starting weight was 320.6 pounds. My first week, I was down 3.4 pounds and weighed in at 317.2 pounds. Last week, I went up 0.8 pounds, I was 318, and this week, I stepped on the scale after spending the last week having gained a little bit, just sticking to my plan and staying on track. And I weighed in at 315.3 pounds, which is a 2.7 pound loss from last week's weigh-in. So three weeks in, and I'm already down 5.3 pounds on the WW plan and with my weight loss journey. I know it can seem like a lot tracking all these five pillars, but I think not having my weight and the food be the only focus um, or even just my weight and movement and exercise being the only focus of this journey has helped me think of it as my overall health and not just weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. So I'm feeling really positive. I'm very, very proud of myself. I need to say that. I am proud of myself of being over five pounds down and we're not even at the end of the month yet. It's very motivating to keep me going. I have made my meal plan for the rest of the week and I'm heading to the grocery store with the girls after I pick Lila up at school today. So I will film the grocery haul and meal plan. A lot of you have requested. I keep sharing those because they give you good ideas for items to pick up or meals to make. I'm including points on them. So take a look for that. That'll be my next video out. Make sure you are subscribed and ring that bell notification so you know when I post new videos. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed today's recap video. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, you got this. Bye.